So you want to work on your own bike, but you have some reservations. This video will hopefully ease some of those worries and get you turning your wrench like an amateur in no time. Here are the top five excuses for not working on your own bike debunked. Let's get into it. So I want to get this out of the way right off the bat. I am not a professional mechanic. I have zero professional training. I am simply just a fat ginger with a camera that records myself working on bikes. But over the last four years or so, I have dicked my way up to a level of unjustified confidence that will hopefully help you dip your toes into some motor oil as well. I don't know how to do it. Ah, you have to appreciate a classic. This excuse stopped being relevant around 2005 when YouTube hit the interwebs. Some might even say that this excuse was irrelevant long before then with the creation of online forums and chat boards. This excuse nowadays can simply be resolved by going onto any Google machine and typing out how to insert whatever you're doing here. Chances are you're going to find a handful of videos, dozens of forums, and maybe even a very specific write-up telling you exactly how to do it is that you are trying to do. We live in an age where endless knowledge is literally at your fingertips. Do not let that amazing resource go to waste. I don't have any experience. I realize this one is closely related to number one, but I felt like it was deserving of its own number simply because of the fact that it provides the biggest safety blanket. I mean, it makes sense, right? I'm not a nurse, so I probably shouldn't be administering any flu shots. But here's the thing. If I wanted to, I could. <coughs> Experience is just a fancy word for how many years I've been worse than what I am today. Like Mr. Edison said when working on his mad decent invention light bulb, I haven't failed, I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Here's one way I like to help people overcome this hurdle. Think of some of the world's best mechanics. F1, NASCAR, MotoGP, it doesn't matter the sport nor the machine. Take the head mechanic of one of those teams. The boss, El Jefe, the dude who was covered in anti seize before you were out of diapers. At some point, no matter how long ago in the past or how young he or she was, they knew exactly what you know about wrenching right this very second. Every single person has to start somewhere. I'm scared to mess something up. I have to admit, that was and probably still is my most used excuse to this day. Mostly because if you mess something up, that means extra dollar signs on that project. And no one likes to spend more money than they have to. But while that risk never really goes away, let me tell you this. It is a lot harder to mess up something beyond self-repair than you might think. Especially when you're talking about anything outside the motor. At the end of the day, it's all just nuts and bolts. Let's look at an example. So you want to put some sick ass apes on your bike. Now these numbers probably aren't accurate, but let's put accuracy aside for a second just for some easy numbers. Say you take it to a shop and they quote you about $1,000. 500 for labor, 500 for parts. You decide to do that job yourself, so you spend the $500 in parts. Now let's say something goes wrong and you're not able to finish the project. You take your bike in, chances are you're going to still be close to that $500 mark that they quoted you to do the job to fix or finish the job. So what did you lose? Technically nothing. But what you gained was how not to do it. So in the future, you could potentially save yourself that $500 in labor. Now, of course, this is a huge generalization, but hopefully you get the idea. I basically want to rid your head of the idea that if you change your grips, that your bike could be totaled. Mistakes will happen. I still do it. Professionals still do it. Everyone still does it. But it's all just a lesson in disguise. Let's go back to the nurse example. Do you think that everything written in those medical books is how the nurses tried things the very first time? No, those books are simply a collection of right ways to do things after hundreds, if not thousands of failed attempts. I don't have any tools. While this is probably the most valid excuse, there is a workaround. It's a bit complex, but let me see if I can break it down for you. Buy some tools. Don't look at it as an expense, as rather an investment. Even with my decent collection that I've accumulated over the years, I still have to make a run to the hardware store every now and then. But I don't get mad when I don't have a tool. In fact, I get excited because that means next time I go to do that job, I'm going to have that tool. 
I made a list of the top 10 tools that I think that you should have before working on your own bike. I'll go ahead and link that video down in the description. And chances are you can get every tool on that list for around a few hundred bucks. Now I know that's not chump change, but think of all the expensive labor hours you could save by not taking your bike in the shop. Also, if you buy that tool, there's a good chance that you'll never have to buy that tool again in your entire life. There's this weird notion around tools these days that everything is Chinese garbage. It's gonna break the very first time you use it. So you have to shell out the big bucks for Snap-on or insert other American company name here. But that's just not true. I've easily bought over a hundred tools in my wrenching career. And out of all those, I've had maybe two or three fail on me. For those of you who really suck at math, that's less than 2%. I can live with that. I don't have a garage. Do you know who else didn't have a garage? This guy, and this guy, and this guy. Now I will say that I do feel spoiled for having such a nice garage with a lift and an air compressor and fancy lights. And I will admit that it makes working on a bikes a lot easier, but it is far from necessary. I've worked on bikes in parking garages, driveways, hell, even gas station parking lots. I've even taken it as far as making a makeshift paint booth using an apartment complex's covered parking spaces. As the old saying goes, if there's a will, there is a way. If anything, working outside of a garage will make you truly understand how much you enjoy working on bikes, if at all. Which brings me to my closing point. It's okay to not work on your own bike. Although I would like for everyone to work on their own bike, it's not for everyone. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, of course, if I'm going up against someone at a bike show who did nothing but drop their bike off and open their checkbook, I'm gonna be a little bit salty if I lose, but I get it. While working on your own bike could save you money, it's not free. It's not free from a money standpoint, nor is it free from a time perspective. Chances are your life does not revolve around your motorcycle, no matter how many born to ride t-shirts you may have in your closet. Most of you have family, friends, kids, wives, girlfriends, or both. So the thought of dropping your bike off and then going and doing something else higher on your priority list and then coming and picking your bike up with some fancy new add-ons is a lot more appealing than spending a few hours on your back trying to get that stupid bolt back in. The point of this video isn't to get everyone working on their bikes, but rather be a little bit of assistant to anyone who has any sort of interest or desire to do so. If this video did just that, do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button. And if you have a friend that needs to hear this, go ahead and share this video. If you feel like I deserved it, I would appreciate it if you go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.